Spells in Hearthstone are a type of card which can only be played during your turn and usually don't summon a minion. One of the most common effects they can have is dealing damage, destroying, or otherwise removing enemy minions from the battlefield. And for the purposes of this video, we'll only be going over the top 10 worst spells which could act as removal, which aren't minion buffs or minion summoning spells. And in number 10, we have Greater Arcane Missiles. This 7 mana mage spell fires 3 missiles, which can target any enemy, and deals 3 damage to each. Greater Arcane Missiles was originally designed to be bigger and better arcane missiles, a staple temple mage spell for a while, which could be either used as a finisher or as a removal to kill 3 minions which had 3 or less health. The problem is, even though Greater Arcane Missile deals 3 times the damage, it costs 7 times as much, which is a really bad deal for the effect. The only reason Arcade Missiles was played was because it was a decent, efficient 1 mana spell, which could be used with Mana Worm, Flame Waker, and Sorceress Apprentice to quickly burst down and overwhelm your opponent. Besides, if you really wanted a removal spell which could deal 3 damage and clear the board, there are tons of better options out there. In Mage Alone, you could use Flame Strike, Fire Cell, Tunnel Blaster, and Flame Ward, all of which do a much better job as removal. And before you ask, having spell damage doesn't increase the number of missiles you shoot, but the amount of damage each of your 3 missiles does. This is way, way worse, since if one of your juiced up missiles hits a 1-1, it'll waste a ton of damage which could have killed a huge minion or gone for face. I will give it that, if used on an empty board, it's not half bad as direct damage spell to burst down your opponent with, especially considering the pre-nerf Pyroblast and Mass of Cthune offer similar amounts of direct damage for the mana. But since this list is only ranking spells on how good they are at removal, this point will be slightly discounted. Greater Arcane Missiles makes the number 10 spot on this list because, although it was pretty bad removal spell, it has seen the slightest bit more competitive play than the rest of the cards of this list because of its ability to also deal face damage. And at number 9, we have Embrace Darkness. This 6 mana pre spell lets you select an enemy minion to steal at the start of your next turn. And at first glance, this card seems amazing, especially since stealing minions is one of the best effects you can have in a card game because it effectively lets you go plus 1 in card advantage. Unfortunately, there's a reason why Mind Control costs 10 mana and Embrace Darkness costs 6. Mind Control, and by extension Mind Control Tech, steals one of your opponent's minions as soon as you play it, and gives them no way to counter it when you play it. Embrace Darkness, on the other hand, gives your opponent a whole turn and a myriad of options to play around the Mind Control effect. The best case scenario of when to play this card is when your board is empty, your opponent is low on cards, only has one giant threat on the field, and Embrace Darkness's Mind Control effect goes off, letting you steal it. And even in this ideal case, you still have to take damage from your opponent's target, since it can still attack and isn't under your control yet, and still gives your opponent outs. In a more realistic case, what your opponent would probably do is try their best to kill their minion by trading into one of your own, effectively wasting the card and the mana you spent on Embrace Darkness. Or, even if you did manage to steal the minion you wanted, it probably is so damaged and useless that you might as well not have even bothered. And while you could make the argument that at least you destroyed a minion for 6 mana, an effect usually priced at 4 mana, you still had to let it attack either face or trade into one of your minions to do so. That said, the best case scenario described earlier could sometimes happen in long, drawn out control priest matchups, especially versus other priests. And using one of priests many spell discovery options, they could sometimes generate a copy of Embrace Darkness, steal one of their opponent's threats, and gain a massive advantage. Which is why this card sits at the number 9 spot on this list. And at number 8, we have Crush. This warrior spell costs 7 mana, lets you destroy a minion, and costs 4 mana less if you control a damaged minion. When this card was first printed, it seemed like another natural inclusion in Control Warrior, a deck that aimed to remove all of your opponent's threats with ease and outlast your opponent with value. You see, the thinking of the time went, more removal meant more ways to deal with threats, which meant better survivability. So, why was it never played? Well, it wasn't because it was too horribly bad, but when Crush was printed in the class known for having the best removal options in the game, it basically had no chance of seeing play. On paper, Crush is comparable to Assassinate, the gold standard for unconditional single target removal, and has a condition that really isn't that hard to fulfill. Some classes, which really do lack single target removal in most standard rotations, like Druid, would love it in fact. Sadly, when Warrior has had near constant access to Brawl, Shield Slam, and Execute, cards which can generate insane amounts of mana and card advantage, it becomes pretty clear to see why Crush got easily overshadowed. Take Coerce, for example, another Warrior removal spell which can target and destroy an enemy minion if you played another card that turn. Whereas Coerce will always cost 3 mana even if you don't fulfill its optional condition, 
Crush will be basically unplayable if you can't fulfill its condition. In fact, this effect has little synergy with its effect since most of the time as a control warrior, or otherwise, you'll be playing removal spells when you have no minions on the board. 7 mana is just too much to be paying for a simple 1 minion removal spell. Especially since at that price, you could be playing multi-layered board clears, mass silences, or brawl for way, way cheaper. And in number 7, we have Cobra Shunt. This 5 mana hunter spell deals 3 damage to a minion and 3 damage to your opponent. We're starting to get to the really bad cards on this list, and Cobra Shot is a really good example of a spell that costs way too much for its effect. Bundling is a term that Hearthstone players use to describe effects with no mana costs that have been combined in order to basically calculate what a fair price would be. To keep it as brief as possible, the more effects combined and flexibility added to the card, the more bundling will add to the final mana cost. This card was printed in one of the first expansions of the game, so either the cards were horribly overpowered or just terrible, like this card. I think Blizzard's rationale when designing this card was that dealing 3 damage was worth about 2 mana, dealing 3 to face was worth about 1 mana, plus the cost of bundling and the hunter tax equaled 5 mana. Unfortunately, a couple of years later, Blizzard showed that they could also print Corrosive Breath in Hunter and still have it not be overpowered. For reference, this card had the same effect as Cobra Shot, except you had to hold a dragon in your hand and it only cost 2 mana. Corrosive Breath was actually quite good, considering it cost less than half of what Cobra Shot did, and found itself as a cornerstone of a very good Dragon Hunter decklist. Another trend you may notice with these cards on this list is that bundling, when done wrong, just makes a card bad in multiple areas, like in the case of Cobra Shot. And in number 6, we have Dark Bargain. This 6 mana Warlock spell destroys 2 random enemies and discards 2 of your cards. The astute among you may recognize that Dark Bargain will still work even if you have an empty hand, effectively removing the horrible downside of this card. Unfortunately, even if this were a good effect for the cost, most of the time you'll still have to pay the discard cost too. For those of you who don't know, unlike in other card games, in Hearthstone, whenever you have to discard, the game does so randomly meaning no card in your hand is ever safe. Your win condition that you just drew into could immediately be discarded when you play Dark Bargain, or any other discard card for that matter. And as of yet, no cards have been printed that let you selectively protect any cards in your hand, just ones that benefit from when you randomly do. And for as bad as this entire mechanic sounds, discard decks have actually been very good in the past. Unfortunately for Dark Bargain, this meant that their deck lists were very refined and had no room for an awful removal spell, even if it did synergize with the deck. And to save you from having to do too much math, randomly destroying a minion is priced at about 2 mana. Discarding 2 cards adds 2 more mana to the cost, meaning the card effectively costs 8 mana for 4 mana worth of effects. Of course, if you had an empty hand, you could pay 6 mana for 4 mana worth of card effects, but that isn't even the worst deal on this list, as you'll see with the next card on this list. And in number 5, we have Inferno. This 3 mana Warlock spell deals 1 damage to all enemy minions and gives all of your friendly demons plus 1 attack. This card once again suffers from having terrible effects all bundled together for way too much mana. Inferno is so bad, I can honestly see it priced at costing 0 mana and still not being played. Maybe that's a slight exaggeration, but like Crush, Warlock is another titan in terms of removal spells. And though it may seem like a minor factor, having access to a hero power that can draw you cards whenever you want, allows Warlocks to be able to quickly comb through their deck and find their best removal spells. Looking at Infernal's effect, both of them are worth 1 mana at most. So the Soil, a card which can give all of your minions plus 1 attack, gives flexibility and works even if your minions aren't demons, costs only 1 mana. Fell Rattler prices dealing 1 damage to all enemy minions at about half a mana, if you exclude its body. So not only does this card have effects worth half its mana cost, it also has two of the most random effects stitched together. When buffing minions, or demons in this case, you probably want another effect that synergizes with an aggro deck, like summoning more minions or dealing face damage. Instead, Blizzard decided to tack on a control effect, and a pretty bad one at that, with an effect that favors building a board. And it really doesn't help that there hasn't been any good cheap demon-centered decks that have been competitive in the three years since it's been out. At least Inferno doesn't damage your minions, but by costing three mana, it makes it basically useless if you just want to use its demon buffing effect or board clear effect. Some great warlock removal that comes to mind, like Defile, Plague of Flames, and Dark Skies, can do everything Inferno can do, and for less. Well, except for buffing minions. And at number 4, we have Ramming Speed. This 3 mana warrior spell simply forces any target minion to attack one of its neighbors. And just for clarification, it doesn't force a minion to attack into one across from it, no it makes it attack a minion to its side of the field. So, if your opponent had two 8-8s eight on the field, one would attack into the other, they would both take 8 damage and both be destroyed. 
If this were every case, this card would be insane. There's a reason why this card only costs 3 mana, and that's because of how few specific cases there are in which this card is good. The most obvious case being if your opponent only has one big minion that you want to remove, but can't since it has no neighbors to ram the big minion into while, funnily enough, still using up 3 of your mana. Or if the two minions you want to remove can't kill each other, you spend 3 mana without killing either of the minions you wanted to. And in by far the most painful case, if the two minions you want to slam into each other are separated by a third smaller minion, or if you lose the 50-50 and your target attacks the wrong neighbor. In any case, this card requires so much setup and assistance from other cards to function optimally that it's usually not even worth running over a more simple, reliable warrior removal. Not to mention, if you do really want this effect on a more efficient card, Super Collider gives you three opportunities to use a ramming speed on a weapon, at the cost of taking some face damage when attacking an enemy minion, and while ramming speed is technically a solo removal spell, it usually needs a lot more help to get close to even being worth running. And at number three, we have Imp Balming. This 4 mana warlock spell lets you destroy a minion and shuffles 3 1 1 vanilla imps into your deck when you do so. Now, at first, this card doesn't seem that bad, especially considering the 4 mana is pretty standard for its effect. And to those unfamiliar with Hearthstone, shuffling 3 useless cards may not sound that bad, but when every deck is required to have 30 cards in it, you're going to inevitably draw 1 or 2 during a standard game. And when you draw a worthless imp, you're basically losing a card you would have drawn instead effectively making the cost of embalming the possibility of messing up three of your future card draws. Pretty much the only real advantage this card has is to delay fatigue, a Hearthstone mechanic which does increase in amounts of damage whenever you draw a card with an empty deck. Rena Warlock was once a strong deck that actually played Blast Crystal Potion, a similar removal spell which destroyed one of your mana crystals instead of shuffling three imps into your deck. And while it was because they really needed single target removal at the time, embalming was printed years later during a time when Warlocks got much, much better removal and when every card drawn was critical for staying alive or staving off aggro decks. And as decks get more and more powerful over time, it'll make drawing cards, unless the cost of drawing useless ones, hurt a lot more. And at number 2, we have Cannon Barrage. This 6 mana rogue spell deals 3 damage to random enemy and repeats its effect for each friendly pirate you control. So, if you control 2 pirates for example, it would randomly fire 3 cannonballs that deal 3 damage each. The main problem with this card is that it's just a really expensive win more card. A type of card which only works well when you're already far ahead, a poor finisher, and very bad as a reliable board clear. Windward cards are usually quite bad, especially for removal spells, since you'll typically want proactive cards or cards that can help you catch up when you're falling behind. You see, even though you could potentially deal 24 damage with this card, it's also really, really hard to get more than 4 of any type of minion to stick around the board for more than a turn or two. And it really doesn't help that the pirate tribe is made up of cheap, frail minions which try to win as fast as possible. Basically, if you're playing a pirate-focused deck right, it should either be as a heavy aggro deck or as a temple deck which prevents your opponent from ever sticking a minion on the board. Again, while Cannon Barrage could function as a game finisher, since its damage could actually hit your opponent's face, for this list, we need to see how good it is as a removal spell. And just like greater arcade missiles, board clears, which rely on randomly targeted minions, always have the chance of not hitting the targets you want it to, and can immediately lose you the game. On top of that, if you have no pirates on the board, you'll only be shooting out one 3 damage cannonball, an effect that's priced at about 1 mana. Unfortunately, Cannon Barrage suffers from the same problems as Greater Arcane Missiles, except much worse. Although it's cheaper and can potentially do more damage, in practice it'll only ever do 6 damage, which is pitiful when you consider how expensive, unreliable, outclassed it is by other removal. And if it weren't for how abysmal the next card on this list is, Cannon Barrage could have easily taken the number 1 spot. And at number 1, we have Deadly Arsenal. This 6 mana warrior spell picks a random weapon from your deck to reveal and deals its attack to all minions. As you can probably guess by now, having poor removal in warrior makes it a lot worse than if it were printed in another class. But Deadly Arsenal is in a whole league of its own. For one, if you just don't have a weapon in your deck, either because you drew all of them already or you randomly generated it, it'll literally do nothing for 6 mana. I think the idea behind this card was that you'd only run two copies of Gorehal and had some other high attack weapons and use Deadly Arsenal as a mega board clear. And sure, dealing 7 damage to all minions is pretty good. The only problem is that Gorehal hasn't been used competitively in any warrior control decks for about 3 years. In fact, the only warrior weapon printed in the expansion with Deadly Arsenal was Woodcutter's Axe, a cheap, low attack weapon that had little synergy with Deadly Arsenal. It also didn't help that the only weapon warriors really ran at the time was the previously mentioned Super Collider a one attack weapon which you really, really didn't want Deadly Arsenal to select. And even in Wild, 6 mana is too much to pay for a simple board clear. 
and ignoring the fact that Deadly Arsenal has the chance to whiff, it also forces you to include bad high attack weapons. Control Warriors only ever really ran Aincar and the occasional bulwark of Azanoth. Two cards, which would result in a pitiful board clear. Besides, even if you did want to run Deadly Arsenal in a Temple Weapon deck, since it deals damage to all minions, you can't even play without risky clearing your own board. So, not only are the best weapons relatively low attack, there are also few cards with good weapon synergy effects. Not to mention just how expensive and luck dependent the actual board clear of Deadly Arsenal is. This card could honestly cost 4 mana and only target enemy minions and still not be as broken compared to other warrior removal spells, because it would still require you to run worse overall weapons for Deadly Arsenal to function well. And when a card can cost 3 less mana and still not even be considered running, a feat that almost no other cards can match, it definitely deserves to be the number one spot on this list. Alright, did we miss any of the cards that you think should have been on this list? If so, write them down in the comments below and any video topics you think we should cover next.